Hi, I'm John Michaelides, System Consultant from Real UK. And I'd like to welcome you to this series of videos where we'll be taking a look at the Bolero wireless intercom solution. Now in later videos, we will be looking closely at the hardware and also configuring a system from scratch. But to begin with, we'll focus on the three modes of operation. Now these are standalone link, standalone with SMPTE 2110, and integrated with Artist. But before that, let's take a general overview of what the Bolero system is. Bolero can be described as a point-to-point -point wireless intercom system. And what that means in layman's terms is Riedel have taken the concept of a talkback panel with a built-in speaker, microphone, and a number of keys to talk and listen to various destinations, and they've shrunk it and they've made it wireless. It works in the 1.9 gigahertz frequency range, so it's license free and it's based on DECT technology. DECT stands for Digitally Enhanced Cordless Telecommunications, and it's the sort of thing that you'd find in a cordless phone in your home. Now, a network is made up of a number of antennas, so there's no centralized base station, and each antenna can support a connection with 10 bell packs, which is the highest possible spectrum efficiency. You can then fit 10 antennas into one RF space, giving you a density of 100 belt packs. Now, of course, Riddle have taken this DECT standard and they've made a number of important improvements. One of the main concerns with any RF system is how robust it is in handling interference. Now, multipath interference is what happens when a waveform travels from a source to a destination via two or more paths, e.g. directly or bounced off a reflective surface. These waveforms then interfere with each other, causing audible dropouts and poor RF performance. Now, Bolero has two technology layers to tackle this. Firstly, diversity. Within the antennas and the belt packs, there are two aerials. They are spatially separated and positioned in different planes. Secondly, Bolero uses an advanced deck receiver, or ADR, which can differentiate between these multipath signals. Now, on top of this great RF performance, what makes Bolero fantastic for the user is Riedel's high clarity, low latency codec. The BV32 codec offers an audio bandwidth of 7 kHz and a system delay time of 35 to 40 milliseconds. This codec outperforms other common codecs such as G711 and G722 in terms of speech intelligibility. So now that we're familiar with some of the key concepts to Bolero, let's take a look at the three modes that it runs in. So let's begin by looking at the two standalone modes, starting with standalone link. As the name implies, the network is created by simply linking antennas together, using the link ports on the base of the unit to create a daisy chain or redundant ring. You can have up to 300 meters between antennas on Cat5. So with its plug and play simplicity, standalone link mode is ideal for short term installations. Standalone with 2110 mode works in a very similar fashion, but instead of linking antennas directly to each other, they are all connected to a switch. This means you can use existing network infrastructure to build your Bolero network or distribute it over a wider area using fiber between switches. In both standalone modes, you use an integrated web browser for configuration, and the system will support 12 party lines, 100 belt packs, and 100 antennas. You can also add an NSA 002A throwdown box for added four wire and GPIO connectivity. Now the final mode of operation integrates the Bolero network into the Artist ecosystem. In this mode, the antennas are connected to a switch, as are Artist AES67 client cards. You create your Bolero network using the web browser as before, and the belt packs are configured in the director software. In this mode, you have the full power of Artist at your disposal, and it really is like carrying around a portable talkback panel with all the extensive wire connections that Artist provides. Up to 100 antennas and 250 belt packs can be added to a network in this mode. So that's it for this introductory video. Hopefully you'll join me next time when I'll be taking a much closer look at the hardware and some of its unique features.